Hello, in this episode, in this video, I'm going to review the season premiere of The Legend of Korra, book 2, uh, Spirits. And, uh, so to start off this review, I'm going to say that there might be spoilers in this review. If you haven't seen the episode, feel free to check it out uh, before you see this video. Uh, other than that, you've been warned. Uh, so to start off the animation, I thought it was really good. Uh, I thought, it, it blew me away, I, I mean, I kind of had to say in, this, in my review, uh, because I was expecting the animation to be, you know, like season one, or, you know, whatever, but wow, it just, it, the colors were so bright, and they pop so well, and they, it's so fluid that it's just like, I was floored by, by the animation, like, it, it really wanted me to do some, it wanted me to, eh, wanted me to work on other, you know, art stuff as well, and art projects and all that. So it was really cool. Um, now, as for story, I think what the premiere had was very, very interesting, and uh, it, it really made made me, you know, die kill for uh, next week's episode. Um, because I, you know, the thing that I like about the premiere is that it introduced a lot of stuff that this season is going to talk about, and that's you know, spirit, you know, the spirits, and uh, in, in, because like, the avatar is the bridge between. Uh, our world and the spirit world, and I think that's just really, you know, that idea's been cool, I mean, I'm really, I thought, you know, when they introduced the Lost Airbender, I thought it was, you know, a, a concept that they just kind of introduced and just left, and it was like, oh yeah, it's spirit world, okay, whoosh, and they just kind of moved on, so I'm really glad they, that we're getting a season of Avatar, you know, since Korra's, you know, uh, that will focus on the spirit world and will develop it and get into it and just, you know, flush it out. And I really think that's really cool and really interesting. Uh, and the designs of the uh, spirits, I you know, or the dark spirits, if you will, are really creative and really unique. Uh, I mean, it's just, when you look at them, it's just, you're just drawn by that design. Uh, and I know that this show's been, you know, the this series has been compared to Miyazaki films, but it's very Miyazaki-esque in those designs. Um, another thing I kind of like about it, as well as this, you know, br this build-up of the Civil War that's, that's you know, about to break out, and, you know, to me, a lot of people, I feel, forget about how important a Civil War, like, how, you know insane that is for you know in my opinion in a kid's show to have a civil war is insane uh or a show that's on a kid's network i should say uh, i mean i've seen some you know shows on like cartoon network and you know those t type of channels and i never really seen a lot of shows handle civil wars so that seeing this handle is just you know great i'm really interested in seeing where it's gonna take it uh now I'm gonna talk about you know what everyone has been talking about on the uh, on the message boards on the tumblers and all that fun stuff. Cora's attitude. Uh, I kind of agree with most of what people said, but I do think that some of it is can be justified. Uh, and the one that to me I I find justifiable is really the anger she has. Not the anger, I guess, but like. Her decision of leaving Tenzin for her uncle to train her in, in you know, spirits and, you know, all that kind of, kind of shit makes sense. Uh, I, I mean, it's just, I've read so many posts saying how, you know, Korra is a, is a terrible person for doing that to Tenzin and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and it's just, you know... At least she said she was sorry. At least you know she said, "Well, I've I've learned as much as I could from you. I think it's time for me to move on." You know that's a better you know, you know she treated she handled that way better. But at least she's sorry. At least you know, she explains where she's coming from, and you know you could kind of see why she wants the switch. Because if you're not if if the current uh, teacher, the current mentor that she has isn't isn't doing what she's you know wanting, or you know it's just like I'm not getting what I want, you know, maybe I'm just wasting my time here. It's, you know, uh, it's a good decision to try something else if if that doesn't work. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying, you know, give up on that and then never come back to it, but, like, you know, feel free to try new things. I mean, and, and that's really what I think is important, and that's really what I liked about that scene was that it really showed that she really wants to 
you know, be to be a good avatar. She wants to get better. And, you know, if you feel that you're not going to get better with, in the current situation that you're in, time to try, try something new. So I think that, you know, that kind of attitude is justified and all that. The only times I, I... I think there were moments where she was arguing with Mako that I think were just kind of unjustified. Like, the first, you know, time they were arguing, I guess, or in a fight or whatever you could say, would be when uh, she was like, oh, you're taking tens inside, typical, and all that. Okay, that's you know an okay you know thing to snap at. Oh, okay, whatever. We'll move on from there. And then it's like, okay, Coral. Well, you know I'm gonna side with you on this one. And then she's like, oh, now you're siding with me on this one. Oh, I see how it is. And so, so it's like, you're already eight. what? Um, I mean, I guess she she's angry because like of how like wishy washy he is with whatever he says. But it's still like, you don't have to treat him like complete garbage um and then I, I saw that and then like she was just really un like unnecessarily mean to her father at times I mean yeah I get that she he was overprotective and you know all that but I just thought ultimately she was I mean she could have just handled it better than just saying oh leave I can't believe you blah blah blah, blah. It's, it's just like he's your dad, and, and you're making him feel like crap, okay, um, I, I mean, I still like Korra as a character, I mean, I, I have nothing against her, it's just, I, I think she was just unnecessarily mean, and then, when, you know, she was, un, again, unnecessarily mean to Mako, and he was just like, oh, uh, you know, it's like, oh, why are we talking to my dad, and he was, and Mako just responds like, oh, well, he just wants to make sure you're gonna be okay, and she's like, oh, oh, yeah, it's, it's like, re really? You're, you're just going to get angry because he wants to make sure that you're not going to die? Okay. So maybe, uh, it's, just, it's, it's weird. And it was like, oh, well, it makes sense because she's a teenager. She's not 13. Okay? She's not 13. Uh, she's probably in her early 20s, maybe, you know, 18, 19. And, and, you know, those are somewhat rebellious years, but they're not, like, fuck the world years. I mean, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just thought that they made her kind of unnecessarily mean at times. Uh, but, you know, whatever. There, there's worse things. I think, you know, the worst thing that happened in the premiere was Bolin's three-girl juggling act. Uh, because... You know, you see Asami, and you're like, okay, great, she's she's in this episode, great character, which, you know, another negative, I really felt that Asami was the biggest, biggest waste of time in that episode. Like, you didn't need Asami at all in that in that premiere, and everything would be A-okay. Um, and I think that's, that's a problem, uh, because if... I don't see the point of that Asami story, then why have it if it's not going to serve any purpose? And it might serve purpose later on, but it's like... Um, but yeah, I it, it kind of plays with your expectations because it kind of makes you think that, okay, well, Bola and Asami are going to get together, right? Right? And then he gets attracted to a girl with what... A redhead. Okay. So then I guess he's gonna go with her. Okay, now he's going with with one of the twins from the Northern Water Tribe. Oh, alright, that makes sense. Uh, and it's just, like... Just, why did you... I mean, I, I just don't understand, like, why they had... Why they felt the need to have three girls in Bolin's, you know, list of... Girls I want to date. Just, just, just have him go with Asami. Everyone knows that that's where he's going to end up at some point in the show. I know that's going to happen. Um, it, but it's like, I don't understand why we're waiting for the hat. Um, so yeah, I think the Bolin thing is annoying. And a lot of people are saying that he's also immature and they made him more like of a comedic tool in this season. I disagree. He was always like that. I mean, just watch season one. He doesn't act like a fucking adult. 
I mean, oh, Cora lost all her bending but knows how to do air bending. Well, at least you know how to do air bending. That's and he said that at the most inappropriate time. Mature people don't do things at inappropriate times. So I don't I don't get that that complaint. But uh it's just, I don't like how they're handling his love situation. I think that's, you know, my only gripe, my only um gripe with him. Uh, but overall, though, the the premiere was great. I, I really thought it was a nice way to introduce this, to bring us into the season, and it's just like, and the fact that it ended on a brink of a civil war was just, it was great. It was just like, oh, shit, there's gonna be a civil war. Oh, fuck. And then it ends. And I thought that was so clever. I loved it. I loved every, um, you know, reveal in that episode. Uh, and I really loved the inclusion of Boomy, Tenzin, and uh, her and his sister all interacting with each other. I thought that was really cool and really refreshing. Uh, so we're just seeing because like it's just I don't know. I really love seeing that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, ultimately really happy with season two of Korra right so far. Uh, a lot of people are already vowing not to watch it anymore. I I think that's a they're dumb. Uh, because it's, the premiere was, was good. It was a great premiere. Uh, but if I were to give it an E score, I would give it a 9 out of 10. So, should you see it? Yes. I, I recommend it. If you haven't seen Korra, check it out. See, check out season 1. It's pretty good. Uh, but yeah, that's it for the premiere. I think it's, it's good. It's a 9 out of 10. See ya.